Hey everybody, I want to share something with you that I discovered about my own amp. This might sound funny, but I never knew this, but I was reading the manual that Mr. Doug West always writes there, Boogie, and uh, I discovered something really cool and I started doing something different that I never did before. If you haven't tried this, check it out. So come over here. Um, on channel two, I normally would run this a lot differently. I would take the middle way down um, or at least maybe to 10 o'clock and then the base way down to kind of clean everything up. Um, but what I discovered from reading the manual is that from like noon and above, like I have it set up to about one o'clock, the middle acts like almost like a lower register treble um, tone, which brings the, the sound really forward and allows you to actually add more bass in. So believe it or not, this setting with a lower gain presence is pretty high and and these treble mid and bass here it's actually a super super tight forward kind of tone um it reminds me a bit i keep thinking of that lamb of god record uh it, you know where mark's using the mark four it kind of has a very mark four uh sound to it anyway check it out and here's the uh eq equated with that which is kind of normal Hey everyone, I'm here backstage and I wanted to give you a little insight as to the guitars that I'm carrying on the current Dream Theater Top of the World tour. So here is my guitar chest, my guitar closet, whatever you call it, but it has great mood lighting um, and the guitars are nice and comfy. So the way that these are organized is uh, we have the six string standard tuned guitars on the left. We have seven strings here in the middle. We have two guitars tuned to D for Endless Sacrifice, and we have two eight-string guitars. Um, they are all Majesties except for one JP6. So let me just quickly go through the colors. This first one is a Majesty 20th Anniversary. Beautiful honey burst there. Oops, and I just broke it, so sorry, man. Uh, the second one, or is it honey butter? Honey butter burst. Um, this is a uh, Smoked Pearl Majesty. I open the show with this guitar. This is one of my favorite colors. This is an Enchanted Forest. It's a little smudgy. We gotta, what do you think? All right, we'll fix it, don't worry. Before show, it'll be show ready. I'm busting on Manny. He keeps the guitars in beautiful shape. They always play great. This is the only non-Majesty. This is my 20th anniversary version of the JP6 with the uh, forearm scoop there. Beautiful, beautiful instrument. You see the 20th anniversary. Back plate, and then we get to the seven strings. This is a Burnt Ember 7. Another one of my favorite colors. Love the way that wood grain just shines through. Just gorgeous. And then right next to it is a stunning majesty. This is the Hydra Space. Named Hydra Space because it really just reminds me of the ocean. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't know why I signed it. I don't sign my own guitars. Don't think I sign my own. <laughs> I don't know why that one's not. Okay, this one is uh, tuned to D. This is the Titan Blue. One of the latest colors. It's a really rich blue. Um, I love the black hardware, the, fat, the flat black hardware. Flat black, hard to say. Um, this is an older color. This is a red sunrise. Majesty. Also tuned to D. And then we have two eight strings in Mystic Dream. And you guys have seen this. And I play this, of course, on Awaken the Master. Um, yeah. Love the color change. The very first signature guitar I did with Ernie Ball Music Man, of course, was in Mystic Dream. And so we followed the tradition with the eight string. And that's it. Oh, I just broke another one. I really need to be more careful with these guitars. Anyway, those are the guitars I'm carrying on the Top of the World Tour. Come see the shows and you will see them in my hands playing them live. All right, take care. Hey everybody. I'm backstage here with my rig and I just wanted to give you a really quick little look inside of 
one of my favorite things about this rig, and it's my secret pedal drawer. So let me show you what's going on there. Um, these would be the front end pedals that go in before the input of the amp. So this tour, let me show you what we have going on. Um, we have the dark glass hyperluminal compressor. I use that only on my clean sound. Um, check out that setting, it's a beautiful sound. We have this uh, MXR Mini Phase 95. Sounds really good, simple dial. Sounds great on leads, on cleans. The Red Dirt um, Overdrive, as you can see with my settings, I'm using the old drive down, level up type of thing to give a, a boost if I need it to tighten up a rhythm sound. Kind of does a similar thing that the shred feature on my boogie does. Over here, of, co of course, we have my TC Electronic Dreamscape pedal. Um, right now it's set to a flange mode. And then two really cool pedals that are throwbacks, but they're new. So these are the Boss pedals. Um, they're both Waza craft versions. This is the Dimension C. I have it on setting three. And uh, the CE2W chorus pedal. And I have it really just, it's just straight up uh, set on the CE mode. And uh, sounds killer. And then I know this isn't the pedal drill, but if you come up here, this is kind of the part of the rig that's for the piezo. So there's a tuner, there's a TC Electronic Body Res, uh, House of Fame um, re reverb, and then a Framtone uh, switcher where I'm able to get my magnetic and piezo to split from my guitar. And then Maddie could do the guitar changes, A, B, and mute. And that's it. But that's my little secret pedal drawer. Not so secret in the front end is my crybaby JP95. But that's it. Wanted to give you a little look inside. All right, check it out. Hey everybody, I'm here backstage and I've been telling you guys a little bit about the rig I'm using on the Top of the World Tour. And we've been talking about the front of the rig, which is all the exciting stuff. But you know what? It's actually even more exciting in the back. I didn't want to leave it out. So I want to give you a little bit of an insight as to what the back of the rack looks like so you can really nerd out. First of all, this rack was built by Maddie, my star tech. He did an amazing job. So just a little tour there of how neatly everything is set up, all the wiring, all the cabling, all the ties, everything is secure, not going anywhere as this rack gets uh, traversed across the country and all over the world. Just a beautiful, beautiful job. So thank you, Maddie. But besides that, I wanna show you guys one secret weapon. This is like the American Express, don't leave home without it. Um, this is the TC Electronic Mimic pedal. And let me explain to you what it's doing in my rig. So for the longest time, when I record guitars in the studio, I double track guitar. So that means I play one performance, I put it on the left side, I double the same thing, put it on the right. That is like the big stereo guitar sound. So live, uh, in order to recreate that, obviously I'm only one guy. So there's a bunch of methods I've used in the past. I've taken a 2290 and done a seven millisecond split. Um, I use in-ear monitors to monitor the show. So I've had my monitor engineer offset one side by five, six, seven milliseconds to give that split but nothing has been able to do it better than the TC Electronic Mimic pedal. So what that is doing is this. First of all, you have to plug your guitar into it first. It has to be the first thing your guitar sees because what it's doing is it's detecting the transients from your pick. So in other words, every time you pick a note, it detects that velocity, uh, that velocity and then makes a decision to offset that attack by a certain amount of milliseconds and detune it a certain amount completely randomly. So every time you pick a new note, it does some other random offset. And it is the closest thing you'll hear to sounding like there's two guitar players playing. In fact, I haven't done this, but if you wanted to and you were pressed for time, you can go in the studio, record one performance and split it. Um, but what you do need for this is uh, you do need a two amplifier setup because you're gonna go into that pedal and then that's gonna split off into the two amps. Um, there is, the way I have it set, I have it set so there's the original on the left and the double on the right. You can have it where there's two doubles or three doubles, there's a bunch of different settings, and I keep the milliseconds pretty low. So probably within a range of five, six, seven milliseconds and splitting it off. 
Sounds so cool live. Sounds amazing if you use in-ear monitors, you get that big stereo sound. That's the Mimic, it's in the back of this rack. You didn't see it in the front in the pedal drawer, but there you go, there you have it. The back of the rack, oh yeah. Hey everybody, I'm here backstage on the Dream Theater Top of the World Tour. And uh, you guys seem to be liking the videos I'm doing, showing my gear and guitars and stuff. So I decided to do another one. And um, you know, I'm a I'm a total gear nerd, and I know a lot of you guys are as well. So hopefully you enjoy this type of thing. So last time um, I talked about the pedal drawer and the front end effects, and today I want to tell you what I'm doing in the effects loop or the post effects. So the difference is um, the uh, pedal drawer and pedals like compressors, wah pedals, overdrives, all go into the input of the amplifier and they are affected by what you're doing with the preamp of the amplifier. So whatever is in there, if you're distorting it, it's gonna distort. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't have COVID, don't worry. Um, you know, if you're using a, a compressor, uh, it's going to interact with how you set the preamp. If you're using a, a modulation pedal like a chorus, it's going to interact with the distortion. You get kind of more of like an old school analog analogy vibe. And that's also the reason why you don't want to necessarily put things like reverbs and delays in the front, because those delays and reverbs are going to then be processed by the preamp and distorted. And me personally, I don't want that. I know that's like a classic sound, and guys used to do that when amps didn't have effects loops and they do like an analog delay or something in the front. You know, it kind of reminds me of like old school Rush albums. You'd hear that sort of sound distorted. But for me, I do the effects like reverb, uh, some modulation and delays in the effects loop. So just a quick history lesson on this. So you guys might have remembered uh, me touring back in the day and I had these big giant racks full of gear. and basically what I was doing was um, I was trying to be able to switch uh, presets on my pedal board to different sounds without the uh, the multi-effects unit that I was using glitching or the delay cutting off or, or it having to load or something like that so what I ended up doing it's kind of totally overkill but they all went through a mixer so I'd have like multiple really powerful uh, effects processes like two 2290s, M3000s, PCM80s, even tides, and they'd go into this mixer and I literally have like an M3000 that can do all this stuff just set on one delay. So I could turn it on and off. And the 2290 just set on the chorus so I can turn it on and off. So fast forward to now and what I'm doing now, what enabled me to shrink my rack down is, of course, I'm using the Fractal Audio Systems Axe FX. I'm using the Axe FX 3. So that unit is so powerful that it could do all that stuff just in one unit on one preset. So I'm basically recreating those big, big racks of stuff with that one unit. So let's come down here and look at my Axe FX 3. All right, so first of all, there are two because one is a backup. All right, um, I am not using the Axe Effects for the amp modeling or the cab sims. All of the amp sounds are coming from my boogies. Um, I am only using the Axe Effects for the post effects, okay? So delay, reverb, chorus, and stuff like that. And this is how it works. So if I go to the home page, um, I am on one preset the whole night, okay? Preset 40, JP rig. Um, that is one preset. It doesn't change the whole night. What we did is we have a layout that you can see with all the different effects blocks that I use. And I'm basically just turning them off and on within the song. So I'm bypassing or unbypassing. So if I uh, zoom in here, I can give you an idea. Let's go back this way. I want to go in this direction. All right, so um, there's a volume pedal block. Um, this chorus block is doing what the 2290 does. Um, so 
I'm gonna turn that on and off as I need it. You'll see a preset if I change it here, it'll light up showing that it's on, okay? These are some other fancy blocks that I'm not using particularly on this tour. Uh, rotary, if I want a kind of Leslie thing, a pitch block. Um, that might do some, you know, octaves or different smart uh, harmonies and stuff like that. Um, a, a trim. These are things that are more specialized. Uh, on this tour, there's not really a song where I'm using things like trim or or pitch or Leslie and stuff like that. On the last tour with Scenes from Memory, I had a lot of that going on. So then we come over here. This is probably the most important section. I'm going to like go over here, which is the delay section. So... I have a whole bunch of delays going on um, and they're different delay times. Some are long, some are short, and you can see them change right now. They're bypassed. If I go to a lead sound, you see that delay lit, lit, uh, lit up. If I go to this one, it's actually going to a, a second. Um, there's an A and a B, so it's going to the B in that delay. If I turn that off, Turn on this delay, you can see that light up. I have one specifically for the volume swells, you can see that light up. All right, but basically they're all on and ready to go and I'm just turning them on and off, bypassing them. There's a reverb block there, the enhance we're not using. And just really quickly to show you what I'm doing as far as settings on this delay. Um, this is kind of, this is a dual delay all right, you can see some of the parameters here uh, as far as the mix and level. Um, I have the mix all the way up, so it's 100% wet, and then I just bring the level of the delay. There's a little bit of an EQ curve. Um, I'm looking for, let's see, this page. Okay, this will show you basically the delay times that I'm using in this specific one. So for example, this has 500 milliseconds on the left. If I go down here, it shows you the right side, 996. And that's just one example. And that's the story. All right, so basically the Axe FX stays on one preset for the entire show. Super, super powerful. And I'm just turning those blocks on and off, bypassing. And I can go from a clean sound with compressor and chorus and delay to a totally dry crunch sound on the amp, to a lead sound with a certain delay for this section of the song, and then a lead sound with a certain delay for this section. And it's all seamless, the delays trail as you change presets, it's awesome. And uh, that's it, that is what's happening in the post effects world via the Axe FX3. And I'll get into uh, what's happening behind the rack and also my pedal board in another video um, coming up. But thanks for watching and listening. And uh, I don't know, this is fun. It's nerdy, but I love it. All right, talk to you soon. Hey everybody, I'm here at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. I'm on stage and uh, people have been asking me to do a little tour of my pedal board setup. So I'd like to do that for you right now. I'll explain the whole control center, the bridge of the Enterprise, the cockpit, the whole thing. And uh, anyway, I guess let's let's get started. So. The first thing that people ask me about a lot are these things right over here. Uh, these are basically heavy metal footrests and uh, they weigh a ton. They were made by our friend Patrick Slats from Holland. I know Maddie really looks forward to setting these up every day. <laughs> anyway, the idea behind them is this. When I practice the guitar, I practice uh, classical style. So I sit down the guitar is on my left leg, my right arm is in front of my body, and the neck is up. So I can kind of emulate that standing by doing a rock pose number 27, but it's a little bit more comfortable using knees. So basically there's just, these are standing footrests. So if I put my foot on here, you'll see me do that a lot during the show. Suddenly the guitar swings over to the left. It's as if I'm sitting down classical style and I can use proper technique. Anyway, that's what these are. So Maddie, swing around here, and uh, you'll see another two things. You see monitors. Um, I do use in-ear monitors to monitor the show, so you're, you might be wondering, why do I have wedges? And the reason is, is um, 
there's no guitar cabinets on stage, so I don't have the connection with the cabinet in order to get feedback or have the thud of the amp. So I have guitar cranking out of these monitors and that gives me that connection, even though I have the in-ears. Um, here we got the mic stand. It's an SE V7. I got my picks here with the pick clip and the mic stand is mounted to this pedal board. That's called a mod stand and that's manufactured by uh, Dozer Metalworks. Um, same guy who actually makes James's mic stands. So that's a cool thing. And that eliminates the, uh, you know, having some kind of flimsy mic stand uh, on a tripod or whatever you're gonna do. So now going down to the pedal board, on the left, that's an Ernie Ball volume pedal. Of course, it's all tricked out with diamond plate to look cool. Um, it is acting as a controller for an expression pedal for the volume block in the Axe FX. Um, over to the right, the uh, JP95 Wah controller. That's controlling my signature Wah that's in the rack. And then a TC Electronic Polytune 2 Black because black is cool. And then, of course, the real star of the show is the RJM Music Mastermind GT. This is, in my opinion, the best MIDI foot controller you can get. This thing is like ridiculous. Basically, it will do whatever you want it to do. Um, it will change amp channels. It will do preset changes, program changes, control functions. Um, you could label songs. You could label any button, whatever you want. You could change the color of any button. Basically, there hasn't been anything that I've tried to do or wanted to do that this thing couldn't do for me. Um, built like a tank, roadworthy, everything. And uh, it's amazing. There's even an online or a, a desktop editor and you can save things via USB. It's a great, great unit. And another thing people ask me all the time is how I'm switching patches during the show. And uh, I do have the ability to switch myself here in real time or turn things on and off as I wish. Um, but what we're doing is um, the MIDI program changes are coming from a laptop off stage as the show is running. So basically I could be anywhere on the stage and then this will switch at the right moment to the right sound. And that really frees me up, especially with the wireless that I'm using as well. So that's how that's happening. Um, and of course, if I wanted to change something and override, I can do that in real time. And uh, that is it. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. The only other thing um, I can talk about is some of the sounds, if you wanna hear some of that. Um, now that we've talked about how everything works. So I will give you a little demo. So for example, Here's like my main clean sound. Add in the piezo and the phaser, it can do things like... Uh... CR1, that's like my main crunch sound. It's basically channel two of the JP2C with the EQ1, and that's like my drive. <laughs> the mimic pedal doing that split we talked about. You can always kick on the overdrive if you want more juice. And then crunch two is usually uh, I'll use the chorus block and the, the um, Axe Effects to do that 2290 thing. This is great for big 
let's say the chorus of uh, the alien. You know. <laughs> Um, I have a couple different delay times. Lead one is usually the main one I'll use for like a more of a soaring solo. You can hear like the delays are really rich and long. So like maybe a... Uh, something like maybe the middle part of that song, I'd use more of the short delay. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, of course, I could turn other effects on. Uh, it's maybe a C2 pedal. Um. <laughs> actually in Canada Tuscany of course the swells preset is one of my favorites this is awesome that you'll hear during the show and i hope you enjoyed that little sound demonstration and tour of the pedal board so all right see you soon <laughs>